Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the sort component. Let's look at sorting through a dynamic list with multiple sort options. This is example four in the project. Think of example four as a sexy add-on to example three. We're going to be using the combine component along with the sort component so that we can sort by many projects. Look at this. We are combining five different collection lists into one single list. And you can see this all the way down to 500. So we're combining five lists. We're going to sort through all five of those lists because all five are now part of one single list wrapper. So let's get to the top here and we have four options to sort by. We're gonna sort by project number, color, year, and service. We can only sort by one at a time. So if I go and sort by project number, you'll see that it is sorting by project, ascending and descending. Sort by color, we're now sorting by color here. We have yellow, and then we'll get to red, and so on. And same thing for Man, this is a long list. Year, 2020, we click it again, 2017. And this is also sorting. Sort by service, same deal. It's going to alphabetically sort by the service. Web design with W, branding with B. Nice, and we have multiple options sorting through the same list. Let's jump into Designer and see how this works. We're in Designer and the very first thing we'll look at is the combined component working like a pro. We have five collection lists on the page. If these were all broken into five different lists, there would be some weird views, some weird things happening when we sort through the list. Let's look at this first collection. We are showing 100 and then we are showing the next 100 and so on. You can see this line break here, breaking up the different lists. In our example that we were just looking at, there was no break, there was no border. These are all being combined into one single list so we can sort through them easily. The next thing we're going to look at is the class on this button. All of these buttons, these sort buttons, have a class of filter button. Nothing unique is needed. It does not need to be an add-on class or ID or anything. We just need filter button. Where the magic happens is the data attribute of sort by. So if I go into the project number filter button, I have sort by class name. And if I go to the color, sort by dot, which is class color. Year, year is sort by year and service is sort by service. So what it's doing is searching for this class, services, and then it's going to sort by the text information inside that class. So if I go to services, we see this is a services class. It's searching for the text inside of this. And if I go to color, we have the color class, we have the year class, and we have the name class. That's it. That's everything we have to do inside Designer in order for this to work. Let me back up in case this is your very first video. We do need to have a class on the collection list element. Collection list element, we have our collection dash list class. Now let's go into custom code and watch all this work. We're in custom code and the very first thing we're going to do is add the FNSuite CMS library to the page. As you can see, this is not the real script file. When we launch the library, we'll have a hosted file ready for you to use. Next, we have our project specific script. And in this, we are going to run a function that happens immediately. This function will happen right away. It's going to create a new FS library instance. And that instance is going to be targeted to the collection list. This entire new instance is going to be stored in a variable called projects grid. And now we can use projects grid later on in the code. And in this example, we're using it twice. 
We have projects grid combined, so we can combine all of the lists with the collection list class. We're also going to take projects grid and sort projects grid. We have our sort trigger. It's going to be the filter button. Remember, we don't need unique classes. We have four sort options and they all have the same class, no problem. The data attribute is what controls how it sorts by. Sort reverse, true, that means it's going to sort in descending order. We have our active class, sort active. This is where active class totally makes sense, where it is actively sorting by name. It's actively sorting by year or sorting by nothing. Animation, duration zero. I recommend having a duration of zero because nothing is leaving or entering the grid. Animations are only going to work with this library when items enter or exit the grid. Nothing is enter or exiting, it's just sorting. So duration zero looks the best to me. If you wanna play around with that, see what it looks like when you do apply an animation, go for it. That's it, that's all we need in order to sort 500 items on a page inside of a dynamic list. That's effing sweet.